Nashville has turned into a hub of all music. I think it's a very welcoming place too, which is I think why people want to move here. It's not a bunch of people like trying to cut each other to get to the top. That's kind of not the vibe here. There's so many incredible studios, so many incredible musicians, so many incredible producers and engineers and mixers. It's a really exciting time here. In Nashville, you want to help everybody succeed because the mentality is we all succeed together. We are in a neighborhood called Berry Hill. Berry Hill is sort of like what a lot of us think of as uh, the new music row. I've recently heard that there's about 200 studios within this square mile. Pretty much every other building's a studio right now. And we're here at my studio, Pentaveret. If it's not the first studio in Berry Hill, it's one of the very first. It's sort of been like what I would consider off the beaten path sort of place to do something different. I personally try to keep it that way. Today we recorded a bunch of instruments for Arcade. I've worked with Rob and Andrew, both of them, quite a bit over the years. They're just two of my favorite collaborators. We tried to kind of get a smattering of session and live guys that, that we know and are friends with that we use on our own sessions that we do. Like These are the guys that we call all the time. We met through Mike Blong, a good friend of ours, drummer extraordinaire, plays with Carly Pierce, and he's, you know, just the man. Try to, like, leave some space and play more, like, individual loops over it instead of playing the arrangement. Okay. You know what I mean? So just, like, improvise, couple grooves, couple fills, couple non simple things like we were doing. We used a 66 Ludwig kit and 5-inch Black Beauty. I used 414s on overheads. I used an R88 on the room mic, which I kind of got to get a little messy with, which was cool. I put it through a pair of 1176s, all buttons in, so they're nice and ugly sounding, which is cool. Rock and roll. Part of what we've been liking doing the loops this way is like we kind of get a live human feel happening to them. I mean, they're real instruments played by real players. And it's going through like real gear. Real gear. Real stuff, so it's all, yeah. it's legit. We use this on bass. This is a Motown DI. This has the original Motown Triad transformer in it. So for all intents and purposes, this is the Motown DI. So what's the vibe? So I think we're going like Americana, simple and songwritery, but also kind of thumpy and funky too for some stuff and play like a lot of ones, fours, fives, flat sevens that work major or minor. Colin Healy plays bass with Dustin Lynch. Awesome dude, awesome bass player. Try some where you just stay on the root, but like play like kind of syncopated stuff. But like just like literally on the G. Okay. You know, but like syncopated. Yeah, the flat sevens. We kind of started with more like kind of twangy, classic Americana country type of sounds. But I think as we kind of keep doing it, we're gonna really start to expand on it. Cause Nashville's got a lot of different sounds. <laughs> I have dreams where I'm as good as Rob at guitar. I've been playing guitar for 30 years and he blows my mind. I don't know how you can possibly be that great at guitar. <laughs> Bobby, do you have like a fuzz factory or something? He used a Supro Black Magic, just like that with a Transformerless Modded 57, which is probably my favorite electric guitar mic right now.
gosh, that sounds awesome. Yeah. So good. <laughs> All right, so what we got here is a lot of these loops that were recorded here in Nashville spread across an arcade kit. We added effects to everything with really easy macros here. So for instance, this silky pad sort of sound. Now we've got, we've added some modulated delay, kind of like a memory man, just to give it a little bit of a spacier vibe so that it's not right. specifically old country. What is the age slider doing? The age slider is working with a couple of filters to kind of mock like old tape, as if you were maybe pulling it from an old record or something. We can actually mess it up a little bit and, and use it in maybe a hip hop beat or a rap beat and make it sound kind of like a sample. So we've got the repeaters that'll repeat it in different intervals. That's cool. Now it's not a pedal steel at all. It's a right. it's a pad, you know. Totally. You use the same kit, make you know, twenty different songs. Yeah, <laughs> if you want. Yeah. In the, yeah. whatever genre you want, really. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It's our buddy Kyle. Kyle Everson. You know, playing all the lap steel, pedal steel, dobro. He's with Martina McBride. I call him for all anytime I need a, a pedal steel. Why don't we fire up a uh, lap steel sound? Like you're watching Walking Dead and there's this fucking Yeah, like that. Can you go down, high G to low G? Yeah, cool. Awesome, man. The stuff that I think is the coolest is the pedal steel stuff. There's not really much like it. It instantly brings a track to life too. It's yeah. really cool. It's kind of a foreign concept to a lot of pop music. I'm kind of excited and I'm hoping that some of these pedal steel elements in arcade show up in some like more modern music because they really work well in lots of different contexts. Here I have this like psychedelic pedal steel lick on my hip hop track or on my, you know, movie trailer and or I've got a banjo in my in the background of some kind of pop track. Now that arcade's out and we know what it is too, it's like I think everybody keeps having more and more ideas for like what arcade can be capable of. Everybody can kind of take whatever little bits and pieces that work for them and manipulate it into something that's new and fresh. Other people that are doing what we're doing are going to keep having more and more ideas and pushing the boundaries and like you guys kind of created a sandbox and everyone's going to play in it in a different way. But I mean, like, 